Death by a thousand paper cuts seems to be the way to go for motorsport games. These and many other news right here, right now. <laughs> Greetings Romies and welcome to Rom Rom, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to a regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel if you're new here and thanks to all those who come here often, especially those who subscribe. My name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If memory serves, we haven't had a week as crazy as this ever. All week we only had material for two segments, then on Friday, BAM! One information after the other reached our shores, or rather our mailbox, filling up the work docket and this video. Apart from what we're going to tell you in the next minutes, like the demise of Traxion, new wheels by Fnatic, or what Red Bull is doing in sim racing, there were also small things happening. And we're not talking about DreamWorks All-Star Card Racing. Yeah, that's a thing since yesterday. Oh, wait, wait. Or the launch of EA's WRC fraud with issues, a thing we'll tell you about in depth in the next week. We're rather talking about the will they, won't they of the official Nürburgring Twitter account, dropping a quite direct hint of Nordschleife being in Assetto Corsa competizione soon, only to delete the tweet a bit later. Or the official Assetto Corsa account categorically denying this will happen, only to delete the tweet a bit later. But on Saturday of all possible days, we got official information on that and more. Here's the news. In the introduction, I was poking fun at the Twitter news releases and deletions surrounding Assetto Corsa Competizione and Nordschleife. It seems somebody at Digital Bros, Kuno's parent company, decided that enough is enough and the company issued a press release yesterday, Saturday, effectively ending the whole story by confirming that Nordschleife will indeed be part of Assetto Corsa Competizione next year. Released as part of the Season 2024 GT World Challenge Pack and scheduled for spring of next year, the Nordschleife is the only announced content of the pack for now. The good news included with this release was slightly dampened with some not so good news. The release of Assetto Corsa 2, the much anticipated sequel to the extremely successful Assetto Corsa, has been moved from spring to summer 2024 and will come out in early access instead of as a full release in a similar fashion to Assetto Corsa Competizione. So not only will it arrive a season later, it will arrive in a non-finished form and will be molded bit by bit into Assetto Corsa 2. Hmm. In any way, of course, we'll keep you up to date as they inch to a full release, just like we did with Assetto Corsa Competizione and Automobilista 2. Just like September, the use of our beloved Sims was again in a sideways motion last month, while the total number of daily average users was slightly, oh so very slightly better than in September, it was by a very small margin. Still about 6,000 more users than last year, mind you. No need to clutch your pearls. Of all the sims, the only one which seems to have grown decidedly is our Factor 2, which jumped by almost 200 more users per day. We suppose it's because of the official R Factor 2 multiplayer online servers, which seem to not only be running quite well, but also be lots of fun to drive. And there's really not much more to say this month, as while some sims lose and some sims win users, it's all by so small numbers that they are not worth reporting. And if you were expecting EAWRC numbers, you'll have to wait till next month, because officially it only came out last Friday, which was already November. 
Amongst a heavy dose of marketing bullshit, iRacing tells us in their development update for the current month that they are working heavily into making graphics and rendering better, a part of the software that has been sadly rather mistreated in the past. Now of course, and as they themselves say, this is a long term endeavor that will take them surely at least as long as it's taken Studio 397 to update the official tracks and cars of R Factor 2 to their new graphics engine. About the rain system, internally codenamed Tempest, uh, uh, they say the release of it is imminent while being shy of promising that heavily expected update for next month. Of course, the update will not only bring rain, but all the physics having to do with it, like wet tracks, different types of weather, and therefore different types of rain, puddles, and surely many other things. We already learned in the past about how the team taking care of the physics of dirt driving were also considering the different ways water and humidity change the driving experience on dirt tracks. Tempest has been three years in the making, which is completely believable, considering the many different parts that have to come together for the physics alone, never mind also the graphics and the sound. The iRacing team also makes clear that support for rain and wet physics will be done one car at a time, as the physics of the tires have also to be taken in consideration. Which means that by the time Tempest comes, real soon now, only three cars are going to be able to deal with wet conditions, which the team expects will be the Formula 1600, the Toyota GR86 and the Ferrari 296 GT. Away from the software part of iRacing and more into the human part, the regulatory and coaching team is getting more people so they can work better on coaching drivers as well as delivering penalties where needed even after the race. Back to the sim, in December y'all can expect to see the Audi R8 LMS EVO 2 GT3 coming into iRacing and it seems it will take the place of the Audi R8 LMS GT3. But that does not mean you don't need to buy it if you already bought the first one, of course not. We're talking about iRacing here, the sunken cost fallacy mate racing sim. No, it means they have a special offer to give you back 100% of the money you spend if you bought it within the last 30 days or 50% of the money if you bought the first one within the last 6 months. All very eye racing. With regards to tracks, Slinger Speedway, Mugello, and Okayama will be the newcomers for the December release, with a team starting work on Porchimao and Navarra, and another team working on SRX cars and micro sprint cars. Fanatic are now taking orders for the most powerful Club Sport direct drive wheel yet, the Club Sport DD+. This new offering looks identical to the 12 Newton meter Club Sport DD, but takes it up a notch with 15 Newton meters of torque. What's particularly noteworthy is that, in addition to PC, the DD Plus is compatible with the PS4 and PS5 consoles, while the Club Sport DD caters to the Xbox crowd. Fnatic again features their full force force feedback that they have featured on their recent direct drive wheels, which we don't find to be all that impressive given that it's just a can't respond to telemetry. So it's the same marketing bullshit as Logitech's TrueForce. They claim the same sustained thermal performance for the DD Plus as they do for the DD, and they claim an improved slew rate over the regular DD, which makes sense given the extra horsepower under the hood, but they avoid providing any real numbers to support their claim of best in class slew rate. It is designed for the Fnatic QR2 quick release, but they say a QR1 adapter is coming soon. The Club Sport DD Plus is now available for pre-order in the US and Europe at 1000 Euro USD. This price is the same as the Logitech G Pro racing wheel, which comes in at 11 Newton meters of torque. If you want a direct drive wheel to play Gran Turismo 7 on PS5, this is definitely one to consider. But for PC, Fnatic has much more competition, so it's worth cross-shopping with the likes of Simucube, 
Camus and Moza. Max Verstappen's sim racing team, Team Redline and Red Bull's sim racing operation are entering a deep cooperation from now on which sounds more like a fusion of both teams than anything else. Yeah, 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 I hear you saying this is not news as it was to be expected that Red Bull ends up supporting Max Verstappen's sim racing team. And we at Rom Rom wholeheartedly agree this was no big surprise, but this partnership means that the bonds between sim and real life racing are growing ever closer and tighter, giving sim racing a boost in status and blurring the line between both. But back to the news, seems Team Redline, Max's team, will take over the reins of both teams with Team Red Bull kinda disappearing under Team Redline's wing. From the press release we gather both teams are keeping their drivers for the time being. As we repeatedly said, many people have come to realize how near sim and real racing are since 2019. The world of truck simulators as understood by SCS keeps turning. Both games are now in the 1.49 open beta, which means that anybody who wishes to do so can already test the newest versions of any of them or both. Apart from the different things we've been telling you about in past news videos, this update will bring the moon back into the games. Seems many of you had wished our biggest and only natural satellite in the games. Having the moon is a little bit of a headache for SCS though, as they want of course to have the moon cycles aligned with real life, as well as having to add moon reflections and reflections coming from its light. Also, they've added dynamic stars that twinkle on the night. I wonder how much they had to stop themselves from making the star night as near to real life as they do with the moon. And while they were already looking up, they've added more colors to the sky which of course will be especially interesting to watch on sunset and sunrise. Oh, how romantic the world of trucking can be. Another new thing coming to both games are used truck dealers. Until now, the only way to get a truck was to go to official dealerships and buy a shiny new one. But from 1.49 on, you will be able to buy used trucks, which of course may come with their own problems, as they already will have collected miles and wear. At least you won't need to hear the lies of the used truck dealer. You know, those guys one level and a politician in their use of language for nefarious purposes. One small but very usable change is that now you can use key bind modifiers when assigning keys to the different things the truck simulators bring with them. Shift, Alt, Control and so on will now expand the possibilities of your keyboard. I personally rejoice in this change as I normally use the key to activate control plus the key to deactivate actions. That way I don't have to learn gazillions of new keys. Moving on from the general to the specific, SCS deployed the West Balkans DLC not too long ago and they are already whetting your appetite with the next addition to Eurotrack Simulator 2. Gris. Yes, sir, they are moving westwards with the DLCs. Also, for Eurotruck Simulator 2, SCS released a Tersen Trailer Pack DLC. While these kind of DLCs are not my favorite, there seem to be enough of you out there who like them. And it's all good, of course, to each his her own, as long as you have fun trucking. In ERA's Pro Division standings, Hayo Horman jumped from 4th place to 1st in the overall championship with back-to-back -back wins at Zolder and Misano. Bjorn Stein moves from 3rd to 2nd. Bolander's early lead faded as he dropped down into 5th position, while Osgol, previously in 2nd place, now sits in 6th place since he was not able to drive at Misano. Horman has proven himself a force to be reckoned with, but 
we will see how he reckons with 90 minutes at Imola. In the Pro-Am division, Chris Wall moves into first position in class in spite of a disappointing sixth place at Misano. It's a place he could easily lose to Martin Spitzer or Nathan Warren, who are tied for second place with 36 points, only six points away from Wall. Warren won the Pro-Am class at Misano, while Spitzer finished down in ninth, losing him the lead for now. And yes, you heard that right. Tonight's race in Imola is going to be a longer one than usual, clocking 90 minutes of a Variante Alta and other difficult parts that uh, I sometimes have nightmares about. And this Wednesday, the AMS2 Community Cup is getting nimble F3s around Spielberg for its fifth race out of eight. One thing is for sure for both series, we'll have battles everywhere in the grid, a little pain and suffering, and a lot of joy intermingled together with nail-biter races. So tune in! Ah uh, yes, the motorsport game saga continues. It seems the $5 million from iRacing for the NASCAR license might not be enough for them to survive until Le Mans Ultimate is out, as we already expected. Motorsport Games is laying off 40% of their workforce. That equals 38 people who will leave the payroll of MSG during the upcoming months. According to the information published by MSG, it will be mostly those working in Australia and the UK. This means the Kartcraft team will most likely get their pink slips. And, as confirmed by people within the Traction team, Traction.gg is closing its doors. How much this will affect IndyCar 24, formerly intended to be IndyCar 23, is anybody's guess. It was our understanding that a big chunk of that work was being done in Australia. So either they finished their part of the work and management tossed them out shortly afterwards, or they didn't and we can all expect the game to be renamed IndyCar 25 as they reassign the work to the remaining 60%. And let's see if Le Mans Ultimate sells as well as MSG needs it to to survive. Being a sink or swim title for the company, well, it's an endurance game indeed.